It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day, and it's time for a fountain visit. We installed this two and a half years ago, so it has been through actually three summers, and overall it is looking really good. I have made a few adjustments uh, over the years, but nothing major, like the string of pearls is original and they have done really, really well. I do shade this with a beach umbrella every summer to keep the, the hottest part of the sun off of these tender little um, Rowlianus. But other than that, I mean, I slop water on this when I think about it, and for the most part, just I've just let it ride. I had originally had all string of pearls up here in the beginning and then I, you know, started popping things in here and there. I've got some sedum morganianum that I recently put in, the burrow tail. These beautiful little grapto sedums, I had a lot of these in here, but I used them for an arrangement that I was making for someone, and I regret it because I love this burnt orangish-pinkish color. Um, I can see that, you know, like this, this Calanchoe Bordeaux is a little bit too leggy now, isn't it? It's, it's kind of ill-proportioned. But here's the thing. If I try to pull this whole thing out, it's going to upset this entire arrangement. Everything's going to come out. So this is how I'm going to handle it. I'm going to cut this down as low as I can. Not going to disturb the roots at all. Then, whoops, one more piece. Okay, then I'm going to limb it up, you know, just to the height that I want it, and I'm just going to set it right back down. Oh my gosh, could I be lazier? I can't. I cannot be lazier. But the thing is, I can get away with this eventually this plant will reroot. And yeah, you know, someday, maybe in another three years or so, I might have to actually take everything out because it's gonna be just thatchy with roots. There's not gonna be any soil. It's gonna dry out really fast. The plants may at some point start to struggle, but we are not there yet. So I'm gonna do the Lazy Girls rendition of fountain maintenance and just limit up and tuck them in. Are these touching soil? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Oh, look at this little Lola right here. Isn't she spectacular? The little Echeveria Lola. And look at the stacking crassula. Do you have stacking crassula that does this? I'm sure you do. See, look at that dieback. No bueno, I do not like that. So I'm gonna trim this up too. And I'm gonna get rid of all that dye back. I've got some more here that's really yucky looking. Ugh. You don't like it. Let me trim all that. That one's okay. Then cut off all of the yucky part. Okay. And then just stick those right back in kind of the, the spot where it's really hot mess looking like that. See, see how I covered up all that? That works. And now this just looks so much more compact. This is a great way to work over your fountain if you have company coming in an hour and you do not have time to bust in and reset the whole thing. I'm also really loving my Crassula Calico Kitten. It's doing really, really well. There's more of it here. Look at that right there. Look at this bunch right here. That's really, really pretty. Loving that. And this Echeveria, I believe this was the, the Incantata that I planted. It's gotten smaller. It was much bigger when I planted it two and a half years ago, but she's also thrown off one giant pup and another smaller pup right there. See that dirt? I don't like that. So I'm going to go over here to my gutters 
And I'm going to rob Peter to pay Paul. I'm going to take some pretty pieces, you know, like from the back, you know, where it's not going to be so noticeable. And these I'm going to use to fill in some of my gaps in my fountain. I love these fat rosettes. Oh, that's a good one. And what will happen here is this plant will now throw off little pups from underneath the cut. You can see one right here. There's a little pup right there. So that'll, that'll be fine. I can tolerate that. Get this little guy. Maybe this little guy here. Okay, let's take these fat little cuties over here. Then I can just tuck them in where I see dirt. That's a, actually a superbum there. Oh, dirt, yuck, yuck. Just setting them down. Oh, that's looking so much better, so much fuller. Love it. All right. Okay, let's take a look. Come around this way. Look at the sedum adolfi, how beautifully it has stressed with the colder temps of late. Oh, also, I was remember the uh, Cynthia Giddy that I was working on a few videos ago. This is one of the pups that I took off her and I stuck that in the fountain. We've got lots of Opalina here. Here's a couple of the Fred Ives that I took from the garden the other day. I popped those in here. And this panda plant, this Kalanchoe chocolate soldier, look at the bloom. How pretty is that? But this piece is sticking up a little too high. So I'm gonna cut that down real low. Take that little baby, limb it up and then stick this guy kind of where I see dirt right there in the gap. So basically, you know, feel free to rob Peter to pay Paul. Look at these rubrotinctum, uh, sedum, aurora. Aren't they so pretty? And these are, these are all uh, little superbums that I just think are so beautiful. And then this Morganianum is going to spill and be just so stunning. Oh, while you're right here, take a look at my crested Aeonium Sunburst. How about that, guys? Isn't that amazing? Started out as just, you know, one rosette in a pot, and it started to grow and grow, and then threw off this gorgeous crest. I am just letting that ride. Um, oh, another thing, too, that we can talk about bucket. Remember we talked about the basic base. You don't want any basic base. So I planted out some Aeonium and some Fred Ives at the base of my fountain and then I took and just ran some rock through it. This has held up really really well. Um, I've also added a little blue barrel cactus right out front there but I don't you know I don't think that there's any any other changes. This this may look like weeds but it's not. This is some more of that sweet alyssum that I allow. See how pretty it is? Here it is here, all those pretty white flowers. I've got the Easter bonnet variety in here too, so I get purple and pink as well. So yeah, you know, this, uh, this is looking absolutely superb. I'm really, really happy with it. It's fun to come out here and just putter uh, with it a little bit, take a look and see if I see any insects or I do see some ants crawling around that tells me that I might they might be vectoring aphids mealybugs something I don't see anything so I'm just going to keep an eye on that and next time I water I could douse this with some dish soap if I was concerned about aphids or mealybug um, uh, coming on to this the dish soap just suffocates the bugs and you can use joy detergent 10 to 1 um, 10, 10 parts water, one part, part joy, and just slop it on 
won't hurt a darn thing and it will suffocate and kill those bugs. That doesn't necessarily work for an infestation, but if you just have a few or a suspicion, it's very, very effective. For an infestation, I would probably go with a chemical pesticide. I would glove up. I would apply it in the morning before any wind um, develops. And I would make sure that I was very specific to just attack the areas that were infested and not apply the pesticide to any other area of the garden. But sometimes you just got to do what you just got to do. Oh my goodness, this is so fun and so amazing. So if you don't have a fountain of succulents, that is your job. I want you to get on Craigslist, get on Nextdoor, uh, get on you know any platform that you can and find yourself a beautiful fountain and plan it out. Then send me photos at my Instagram at Laura Love Succulents or my Facebook at Design for Serenity. Can't wait to see what you come up with. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity reporting from my backyard with our succulent fountain update.